This past year, NBA fans received some devastating news. TNT Sports is in a heat of battle with NBC for the final piece of the NBA's TV rights deal. And if TNT's out, then that would mean these four guys would be out as well. That's right. After 30 long years of being on the air, Inside the NBA is being canceled because the Turner Network lost the rights to air NBA coverage to Amazon. Thanks a lot, Bezos. <laughs> but why would the NBA cancel their most popular show? How could TNT, an organization that flourished as the NBA's partner, be so foolish to not match Amazon's bid? And is there any hope left that the inside crew may survive the drastic ownership change? Or will Charles Barkley put the kibosh in all of it? Well, we just won the best studio show, but these fools turn us from Ingle Nook and Opals into damn Boone's Farm and Ripple. It's crazy. Uh, but at some point, I want to retire sooner than later, plain and simple. We're going to dive deep into all of it. But first, let's talk about what makes Inside the NBA so special. Started in 1989, Inside the NBA was originally a show without a host. But then, a year later, the network hired a young sideline reporter named Ernie Johnson. Ernie, who had cut his teeth in the biz doing sideline reporting for local Atlanta television, was more or less a nobody when he was first hired. He was truly an underdog. Which fit well with the network, keen on making a name for itself inside the world of sports. You see, before buying the exclusive rights to NBA coverage, TNT didn't have the same clout as some of the bigger networks like NBC, ABC, or CBS. In fact, TNT was mostly known as the little brother network to TBS, a station most famous for airing comedies like I Love Lucy and The Brady Bunch. But Ted Turner, the founder of TNT, had a vision for the network, a belief that sports programming was the future of Turner Television. And boy, was he right. From 1990 to 1998, Ernie Johnson ran the show with a rotating cast of co-hosts and helped grow the TNT brand from basically nothing to a powerhouse in post-game analysis. And then in 1998, another member was added to the desk, a recently retired point guard named Kenny Smith. Smith's arrival helped take some of the load off Ernie, while also adding some much needed credibility to the program. It's Kevin Hart here. You gotta enjoy my new movie, <laughs> Think Like a Man 2. Seeing as Kenny Smith was only just a few years removed from being an NBA champion. Kenny also started adding fun segments to the show, such as hosting shooting contests against anyone brave enough to face him. Get Let's go home, home, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And of course, he started the tradition of racing to the big board, a contest he didn't always end up on the winning side of. <laughs> Slowly, Inside the NBA was changing from a heavily scripted sports show to something entirely different. And then, as if that wasn't enough, Charles Barkley was added to the mix. And that's when things really took off. Charles Barkley was a natural in front of the camera. He was funny. On TNT. And I hope you have enjoyed my T-Mobile Fade 5 list. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> Poignant. Like the first time I saw Shaq in person, I said, number one, damn, he ugly. And downright controversial. Let me just tell you something. Women be milking that baby thing. Too. Barkley is just one of those rare TV personalities who can get away with saying anything. Like roasting San Antonio women. I bet you couldn't do that to them big ass women in San Antonio. Oh. <laughs> or honestly sharing stories about his time in the steam room. You know, I got this bracelet from a guy in the steam room back in Arizona. <laughs> you got a bunch of But all of this did was add levity to a format that was in desperate need of a makeover. Allow me to explain. You see, before Inside the NBA, all sports shows followed the same basic formula. You take one or two guys, put them behind a desk in suits, and you make them read a script directly into the camera. But Inside the NBA changed all of that. Charles Barkley wasn't reading a script when he said he would kiss Kenny's ass if Yao Ming could score 19 points in a single game. Hey, Yao Ming gonna get 19 points. If he get On 19 Saturday points night. in the game, I'll kiss his ass right here. And he certainly wasn't looking directly into camera a week later when they forced him to stay true to his word. Hey, you know what? I'm a man of my word. You're a man of your word. <laughs> With Charles Barkley, Inside the NBA was having more fun on set than any other live sports show ever. 
And now all they needed was someone who could hold their own against Barkley. And they found the perfect person in Shaquille O'Neal. With the addition of Shaq in 2011, Inside the NBA went from good to must-watch TV every time it aired. Barkley and Shaq's gigantic personalities clashed in the very best way possible. We've only been to the finals once. So I didn't know I was riding on Dwayne Wade's and Kobe's coattails. doesn't matter, Chuck. I got the same thing you got, and I passed you up 10 years. And now Inside the NBA was beginning to create viral moments on a nightly basis. Segments like Shaq and a Fool were so influential that even active players were starting to take notice. Lock shots, what is it that you like about Shaq and the Fool? I don't watch Shaq and the Coon. I mean Shaq and the Fool. <laughs> Shaq was one of the most dominant players to ever step foot onto a basketball court. And yet somehow, he was maybe even a better TV personality. And thanks to him, Inside the NBA was becoming embedded into basketball culture in a way no other show had before. And what's even more impressive is how strong their bond has gotten through the years. For 13 years straight, Ernie, Kenny, Charles, and Shaq have made us laugh, kept it real, and shared their valuable basketball insights with us. And over the course of that time, the show has won an impressive 19 Emmy Awards, along with getting universal approval ratings from basketball fans worldwide. It's one of the most popular shows in the history of television. So with all of that said, why would the NBA abandon TNT to make a deal with Amazon? Well, it all starts with a man named David Zasloff. You see, back in 2022, David, the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, the parent company of Turner Broadcasting and Turner Sports, put his foot in his mouth when asked about the upcoming NBA rights deal. Quote, we don't have to have the NBA, said Zasloff in regards to TNT. Quote, airing sports is hard. It has to be a deal for the future. Well, according to various NBA insiders, these comments did a pretty good job of ticking off NBA commissioner Adam Silver who has been looking for an excuse to bring the NBA to a streaming service for years now. But not only did that tick off Adam Silver, it also pissed off hundreds of employees working at TNT, because contrary to Zaslav's words, TNT does need the NBA to survive. Quote, if Turner doesn't license the NBA, their costs will fall immediately. And soon after that, the revenue they get from cable and satellite distributors will fall as well, says Peter Sapino, an analyst working for Wolf Research Media. Quote, our estimate is that there's about $600 million of yearly profit that's going to go away. Which is not nothing, considering Warner Brothers Discovery is currently in over $40 billion worth of debt. So essentially, for TNT to survive, they had to find a way to strike a deal with the NBA. But that's not so easy considering their financial situation and the incredibly competitive field of suitors looking to secure a deal as well. Now, let's talk about how the NBA rights deal works. The NBA TV rights are split into three packages. Package A, which includes the NBA Finals, a conference final, weekly primetime games, and the rights to the WBA. Package B, which includes two primetime games a week, the conference semifinals, and the other conference final series. And Package C, the smallest package, which gets you a smattering of regular season games and all the knockout games for the in-season tournament, aka the NBA Cup. Now, the problem for TNT is they're already out of the running for Package A, which was purchased by ESPN Disney for $2.6 billion. And they're out of the running for Package B, which was purchased by NBC for $2.5 billion. This means their only option is Package C and guess who they have to outbid in order to win this illustrious package? The richest company on earth. Amazon placed a bid on package C for $1.8 billion. That's over half a billion dollars more than TNT paid for the same package the last time they met at the offer table. Essentially, the NBA has TNT over a barrel due to the leverage provided by Amazon's massive pocketbook. And if there's anything we know about David Zasloff, it's that he doesn't like to spend money at all. You remember that Batgirl movie drama from a couple years ago where they canned the entire film even though it had already been completely finished? Well, that was all the work of David Zasloff. You see, in cutting that movie, along with many others, Zasloff was able to count the movie's losses against Warner Brothers' tax sheet. This allowed the company to recoup $30 million in losses, which was great for business, but also pissed off just about every artist in Hollywood in the process. 
So what does this tell us about the future of TNT? For one, it tells us that David Zasloff is more concerned with salvaging TNT's money situation than pleasing its fans, which is fairly understandable given that's kind of his job. But needless to say, after the five-day grace period allotted for TNT to match Amazon's offer, the deal was closed, with TNT on the outside looking in. Now, a few days after all this drama came out in the news, Zasloff and Warner did file a lawsuit against the MEA, claiming they actually did match Amazon's offer at the table, and therefore the NBA is legally obligated to consider it. But few believe this will amount to TNT winning the NBA rights back. So where does this leave the inside the NBA crew? Well, for most of the crew, including Shaq, Kenny, and Ernie, they've yet to say anything about the deal and where they might be working come the 2025 season. But it seems like given their ages and where they're at in their careers, they'll likely find a new home in broadcasting sooner rather than later. As for Ernie, he says he's going to stay loyal to TNT no matter what happens, possibly making a move to cover a different sport for the company, such as college basketball or baseball. And for Charles, we've heard a lot of different stories over the past few months. But the most recent one is that he plans to retire from broadcasting once and for all, after Inside the NBA is officially taken off the air. In spite of Barkley's words, some have speculated that Amazon may attempt to reach out and buy Inside the NBA from TMT. But as of today, no such deal has been talked about by either party, and so unfortunately, the most likely outcome appears to be that next year will be the final season of Inside the NBA. So I know this is all a bit depressing, but let's remember that just because Inside is likely over, it doesn't mean that basketball itself is over too. What will the NBA coverage look like going forward on Amazon Prime? Well, if we learned anything from watching their football coverage, their basketball coverage is likely going to be led by a diverse group of new blood in the post-game analysis world. They'll likely have a lot of celebrity guests and some pretty cool on-screen graphics, so there's a lot to look forward to. But others fear that the coverage may end up being more closely resembled to Prime's WNBA coverage which has been pretty hit or miss, according to fans of the league online. Something we can look forward to, though, is the return of NBC's popular NBA coverage, rumored to be led by Mike Tirico, and this old tuned, beloved by basketball fans worldwide. But all in all, the NBA's decision to move from TNT is a disappointing one because of the chemistry formed on the set of Inside the NBA over the past 30 years. It's truly one of a kind and unlikely to ever be replicated ever again. So say goodbye to Charles Barkley and his out-of-pocket jokes. Why 33? That's how many points he had in two months. <laughs> After I had four rings. Say goodbye to Shaq and his insistent need to uphold the big man alliance. We have G14 classification to say anything. And of course, we got to say goodbye to Studio J, a place that basketball fans will never forget. That's a wrap for Inside the NBA, presented by Kia for Kenny, Shaq, and Charles, and Landon, and Anthony, Ernie Johnson. Oh, nice. We'll see you.